Hello and welcome to another episode of the Grind Podcast, video cast, whatever you want to call it. My name is Arnell Alisea from Visionary Business Development, and I am here with Michelle from Bossably. All right. So we actually have a really, really awesome topic today, one that kind of like hits close to home if you're uh, if you're a parent and like you're about empowerment. Um, so Michelle has, uh, was reached out to by a, uh, uh, by somebody that she knows who had, and we'll get to that in just a second. Um, we've talked a little bit about employee disengagement and what the cost might be. Um, uh, now we're going to kind of flip it around and we're going to say, okay, from an administrative standpoint, if you are, if you have, if you work for a disengaged company, right, how do we actually use the tools around us and turn that into an item of empowerment? So Michelle, we're going to flip up this uh, format a little bit today. Usually it's me barreling you over with a ton of questions, but I'd love for you to take the lead and kind of describe a little bit and set the scene on who we're talking about, uh, who you were talking to and what kind of, and and what are the uh, main points here? Awesome. Thank you, Arnell. So I received, I actually am pretty active in LinkedIn. So I share a ton of stuff on leadership, communication, empowerment, you name it. Um, what happened, I, I think it was a week ago-ish, week or two ago, where I received an email as a result of one of those posts, and that email was talking about leadership, dis- leadership disengagement, and this was specifically from a teacher. So, you know, the, some of the terms that I'm going to, I'm going to use the actual terms that she used, which was, uh, the, you know, the group of teachers that are, I mean, they're, they're, they're women, they're mothers, they're sisters, caretakers, leaders, also teachers in this organization, in, in this um, uh, institution, and they feel like they're floating to nowhere on a sinking ship. Man, that is that, that terrifying. It's awful. Right. I mean, it, you know, and, and the way, the visual that I got was the Titanic, right? Um, so hopefully it's not quite that bad. But you know, she she went on to say that you know she the, the, this this group of them feel like the administration is apathetic uh, and not engaged at all. Uh, that there's no empathy or action or involvement during this time. That now and you know it's, I have had a series of conversations that it's even more important right now for leaders. Our, our managers to step up and and reach out so that people feel more loved, feel more cared for, feel more empathy because this is difficult for all of us. Right, so, right. You know, I mean so, that that's setting the stage right now. Right, right. So I think that it's uh, you know for the, this person being a teacher and the administrating administration being. In the posi- putting them in the position that they are, like in- inevitably, that is, you know, doesn't really trickle down. It maybe trickle down, right? But uh, and but it really affects the parents, right, and the students that that are then being served. Uh, so I actually was able to look up some uh, statistics from a Brevard Public School survey, and they were able to post some key findings from that survey, uh, where parents are juggling a lot at home. have one or both parents working from home while overseeing remote instruction. Now, this is kind of key because nearly one third of of parents share a a computer needed for remote work with a student who needs the same device for instruction. I don't really even know how that works. So somebody's getting their uh, their work done during the day, someone's getting their work done at night, you know, do they trade off hour over hour and, um, and, as a result of this whole pandemic, nearly one third have lost a job or significant income. Right. So things are tough already on the parenting side, right? And so to have an administration that seems to be very apathetic or disengaged to that scenario, and is kind of like trying to stumble over the status quo for whatever their reasons are, you know, inevitably it affects the, 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 the leadership in the classroom, which is the teachers. Yep. So well, that, and imagine, so I'm sorry to cut you off, but I didn't want to forget this. I imagine that, those teachers are dealing with the same scenario, right? So not mm-hmm. only are they trying to teach their students in a new way, right? But they're also most likely 
working with their significant other. They are teaching their own kids. <laughs> right. Right? So, so they have probably double the load and then they have an administration or institution that's like, yeah, whatever. I don't care. It doesn't, you just, just do what you can do or right. they're just checking the box. Yeah, it's an interesting thought to think about, like the 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 potential from the administrative point of view, like you know, uh, uh, operational paralysis is what it's known, you know, uh, is is the term that's actually used, where uh, where things are happening at such a rapid rate that you just can't adapt, and you know, you have three different three different defense mechanisms: flight, fight, or freeze. Right. Mm, so right. If the people that fight will have the organizations that get over it. You know, you freeze. You're just kind of you almost seem like apathetic to the entire thing. Uh, and, you know, if you if you run, well, I mean, obviously the whole thing burns down to the ground. But <laughs> but let's enough with the bad news. Michelle, give me the good news. How do I turn how do I turn the tide? So I think, you know, I'm, I'm actually reading this book, which is pretty interesting. Uh, I don't know. So some folks may not care for it, but it's what men don't tell women about business. And there's, there's some stuff I like and some stuff I don't like, but this is, this is directly tied to the question that this particular gal, uh, you know, this group of women that are mothers, sisters, caretakers, teachers, et cetera, and, and, and their a potential strategy to help them feel empowered. So he, th this author, which is uh, Christopher Flett, uh, if I'm saying that right, F-L-E-T-T, -T, had a bunch of items, but these are the three that I pulled out that I thought was really, that, that I thought were the most impactful here. So number one, if I don't like the rules, change them. So, you know, if you, if you're seeing stuff that they're doing that they shouldn't be doing, then, you know, in my mind, it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission to get what you need and just just make it happen yeah so that's, that's part of what yeah. leadership is so that's that's yeah. the first one yeah that, yeah that could be a little bit difficult from when you deal with like such a such a you know like a, a governmental system right so what else is what else is uh in that book that they could use so the second one would be ask for what you want so what is happening you know if you're looking for empathy if you're looking for action if you're looking for involvement what does that mean how how do you get that can you make some recommendations? Can you go as a group and have, a, or even have a point person to say, look, we are looking for ABC, X, Y, Z. This is how we could use some support. This is what we would like you to do. Sometimes managers and leaders are just clueless. They shouldn't be. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. they're not even asking the right questions, but there's nothing wrong with us asking for what we want and need. So that would be the second one. Right. Absolutely. So, you know, it's, it's interesting because there's a, a, you can, there's an ask portion of it. Like I tend to ask for, for a lot, right? And I, like I'll go out and I'll say, Hey, can you help me do this thing? That's going to benefit us both. Right. But then I also find that I have to do some, some manner of facilitation because if the person doesn't have necessarily a fire uh, lit under, up, uh, lit under, lit under their ass, so to speak, you know, then it's very, I find myself waiting like weeks, for things to happen. Is right. there anything around, uh, any kind of like advice that you could give about like not only just asking, but also taking action? Well, and I think that comes into the, you know, the, the idea of leaders. So I had, had put out a poll, you know, do you assume leadership or do you ask for it? Right. So in, in that particular case, you could enact some of the things that you feel that you are in within your realm of responsibility. Let's use the empathy, right? Why? So there's nothing that would prevent this group of teachers from creating their own support group, uh, their own support support group for empathy. They, they they just get together once a week or every two weeks, whatever their schedule allows, to have a conversation of what's getting in their way and how they can help help one another. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't require it, they wouldn't require asking for assistance. They could just take action and support one another in that way. Awesome. That's awesome. So we have to work towards wrapping up. We've got about 25 seconds on the clock here. Give me some last thoughts and then let's do a sign off. Yeah. The one, the last one, the third item would be be prepared to challenge everything I think is unjust to me. So, you know, it, it's that we don't have to just maintain status quo if we don't think that it's the right thing to do. So challenge right. it, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with doing that. All right. Okay. So 
This is Arnell from Visionary Business Development. I'm here with Michelle from Vossibly, and that is the Grind Podcast. We are out of time. Thank <laughs> All you. All right, later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>